So let's go ahead and talk about function, junction, what's that function? Co-function identities, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, when looking at functions, co-functions, co-function identities. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully when you went and completed this, right, I said these are the most common identities that you're going to come up with. So what we did, what you guys looked at, was we talked about a unit circle. And in my beautiful little circle here, so we found these points, 0, 1. I'm sorry, that's 1, 0. There we go, 0, 1. And then see, halfway, of course, was pi over 4, which is at the point square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Then the next point there, which was, eh, it's a little bit close, which was pi over 6. All right, and that point was square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And then our next point, which was um, pi over 3. And that point was uh, 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Right? So we found out those two points. So ladies and gentlemen, what you found out, all right, and if you guys remember, when we were talking about unit circle, when we were dealing with section 4.2, what we determined that the sine of a point on the unit circle, or of our angle, what we represent, was equal to the y coordinate of that coordinate point on the unit circle. Correct? We went over this. Sine is represented to the y. Cosine is equivalent to the x, kind of like what we already went over. But remember, we're dealing with on the unit circle. So we don't need to do the whole opposite over hypotenuse because our hypotenuse is always 1. So we just represented it. It's just the opposite side, which was the y coordinate, or the adjacent side, which was just the x coordinate. Right? Is everybody following me with these two? All right. So what you guys need to understand is when looking at um, these functions, Hopefully, when you guys wrote these down, you guys noticed there were some similarities. Because if I say, what is the sine of 30 degrees or the sine of pi over 6, either way, you guys noticed that that value was what? 1 half, right? Then, by writing all this stuff down, the next thing you should have noticed, Lauren, is if I say, what is the cosine of 60 degrees? Or what is the cosine of pi over 3? And that angle was what? 1 half, right? So those are equal to each other. You guys see how these are equal to each other, right? All right, so what that brings us up to is our what we call our co-function identities, meaning you can have angles that are of different, or you can have different angles, but if you take different functions of them, then they still can be equivalent. So what we do, instead of looking at the rubber pencil, is we say, if I said the sine of an angle, all right, is going to be 90 degrees minus theta, whatever my angle is, that is now going to be equal to cosine. OK? So if I know what my angle is, so if I say my, let's say, um, let's say theta is equal to 30 degrees, right? So cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 90 minus 30, which would be 60, which would be sine of 60 degrees. And the same way works with this. Cosine of 90 minus theta, these are all degrees, is equal to the sine of theta. And this is exactly, I think, more of the one we did. We said sine was 30 degrees, right? So therefore, 90 minus 30 is what? 60. So is cosine of 60 the same as sine of 30? Yes. And you guys can prove it just by looking up here, right? You don't even need to look down there. You can just look up there and say, oh, yeah, it's true. And that works for all of our identities. Now, what about when I say pi over 6 and pi over 3? Is that the same thing? Yeah, it's just going to be radians. So what would you write it then if it was in radians? You could say sine of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to cosine of theta. All right? Does everybody follow me with that? Yeah. All right. 
So you guys have sine, cosine, and then you guys just need to go through us. Tangent of 90 minus theta is equal to cotangent of theta. And cotangent of 90 minus theta is equal to tangent. And then you could do, hold on, hold on. Okay, does that make sense, Yusuf? Chrissy? All right, so what that's representing, guys, and you can just look at this again, just prove it by looking up there. So what's so important about this is because if I give you an angle, right? If I give you that angle and I say, all right, you know, the sine of an angle is equal to this, what's it going to be used by using the co-function identity? So do they give us an example to try? No, they don't. OK, so let's go and do one then. Let's go and do a practice problem. So let's say I ask you that the sine of 30, no, we just did that. OK, of course. Um, let's say, well, no. Let's just say I have, I know that cosine Let's say I say cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, um, well, obviously, you know, cosine. Um, cosine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to the square root of 3 over 2, right? So if I say what is then the sine of 60 degrees? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you don't even have to use your unit circle. You should know automatically that these two are equivalent to each other, right? Yes. So you guys could, yes, oh, think about it. You write down your unit circle, make a sketch, and then say, oh, the sine of 60 degrees is, OK, it's going to be there. But you don't have to. All you can simply say is, oh, I already know that those are exactly the same. All right? Kind of make a little sense? Just by using these co-function identities. So make sure you guys have these written down. Um, and remember, co-function identities have our angles that are equal to each other. All right, it's either going to be 90 or pi minus 2 or pi over 2 minus theta. Does it matter what the angle is, whether it's like 30 or 60? Like the cosine, sine will always be equal hmm? yeah. like for the first, is it for the first quadrant? Or is it it's all, the angles have to be, yes, under 90 degrees. So under 90 degrees. 